Before I begin this review, I must say up front that this game was gifted to me on Steam from the developer Freak Zone Games. A big thank you to them for that, but my opinions on it are entirely my own. Having said that, let's begin the review. Okay, I want you to do something for me. I want you to think of a list of movies and television shows that you think would be turned into good video games. Go ahead, make your list, I'll wait. Okay, I'm going to take a wild guess and say that most of what you listed were things like action movies. Maybe you list some fantasy shows or movies that you think might make a good RPG, or a horror movie or two that you think might be able to be a decent survival horror game, such as Alien Isolation. I'm guessing that the farthest thing from your mind was a bad horror B movie from the 60s that nobody outside of the Mystery Science Theater fandom and those who really, really enjoy B movies even remember. Well, Freak Zone Games thought different, so he made a game out of not just any bad movie, but one that is widely considered to quite possibly be the single worst movie ever made. Monos, The Hands of Fate. Now let me tell you a little bit about this movie. Nothing happens in this film, for the vast majority of it. And when things do happen, when the plot does move along, it doesn't make sense when it actually tries to have a plot. How do you make a movie out of that? Your guess is as good as mine, but the guys over at Freak Zone Games found a way. They decided to go an old-school 8-bit side-scrolling platformer route. An interesting choice, to be sure. Monos the Hands of Fate was released a few years back as a cell phone game, and it was released much more recently on Steam, with some upgrades such as added cutscenes and additional levels. For the most part, this game is very straightforward. It begins with you arriving at the house from Monos the Hands of Fate, where you are greeted by Torgo at the end of the very first level. This serves as a boss fight. And what you're going to be doing in this is walking to the left, you fire your gun to kill anything that gets in your way, you jump over enemies and platforms, and you collect different items. There are some variety in items that you can collect. There are a variety of different types of coins and treasures that you can collect to gain points because if you played old school games, you would know that they typically had a point system and a high score system. This one is no different. You can also gather up an item called a Hand of Fate in each level. This is an actual prop from the film that was rendered into this game, and there are a lot of things from the film put into this game. When you get a Hand of Fate, your health will be increased by one heart, so getting them will make later levels in the game easier on you. Collecting as many as you can, or collecting all of them, is important. You can also get a power-up that's a shotgun that gives your weapon a spread shot, which can take out enemies faster. It also does more damage. You can also collect the occasional one-up if you happen to find it. There are statues of the Hand of Fate at various points that you can destroy frequently for points or for items. This game does offer you some variety in different styles of play. You have the standard, the screen moves as you move type of play that we're all used to from this kind of game. But it also has two levels where the screen scrolls automatically and you have to keep up with it. If you get stuck in between an object and the screen, you die. There is one level that is a vehicle section where you hop in a plane and you're flying to the right and shooting everything in sight. This offers a little bit more variety. The final level offers up a tad bit more variety via a level that scrolls upwards instead of to the right. This offers a change of pace, so there is a good amount of variety here. Each level in this game culminates in a boss fight. These boss fights are taken from the movie Monos the Hands of Fate itself, as well as various other movies that have been done by Mystery Science Theater, such as The Giant Claw. These boss fights range from pathetically easy on a couple of them, to relatively challenging on a few of them as well. 
As for the overall challenge level on this game, the standard difficulty really does not offer up much in the way of challenge, unless you're like me and you aren't very good at these kinds of games. And I'm not, so a game that took other people 30 minutes to beat took me close to two hours my first time through. This really is a very simple game, and if you've played NES games before, then you've played stuff that is very similar to it, and probably quite a bit more challenging. I imagine the challenge level was kept relatively low due to the nature that this was originally a cell phone game. 8-bit platformers live and die by how they control, and that is where this game runs into a little bit of a snag, although I wouldn't call it a huge snag. It's just on occasion, it feels like the jump button doesn't respond when you hit it, so your character will just go flying into a pit when you swear you hit the jump button on time, and he didn't jump. It's frustrating when it happens, but it doesn't happen often enough for you to get so frustrated with it you just give up on the game and don't finish it. How does this game look? Well, I kind of like the look. Maybe some other people won't if they don't like the 8-bit aesthetic, but this does recreate the look of the film fairly well. It has nice touches here and there, like it recreates the look of the house, and there's all kinds of props from the movie that are in the house. When you're in the outdoor scenes, it recreates the unique look of the film where it was almost completely pitch black in a whole lot of the outdoor at night shots in this film. And there was like an aura of light that was just on the characters and that was virtually all you could see. And if the characters faded too far into the background in the film, they would completely disappear because they didn't have proper lighting. And this does a very, very good job emulating that. It also has the film grain that was present on the original film. And you can turn this off if you want to. It's in the options menu, it will let you do it. But whether or not you like the look of this game really boils down to do you like the 8-bit aesthetic or not? I do! I think this is a sharp looking game and it's fairly well animated, at least for a cell phone game. I mean, there are other 8-bit style games that are better animated than this one, but you do have to remember that this was a cell phone game originally. Sound-wise, this nails the soundtrack from the film. If you're familiar with the film, if you've seen it multiple times, you're going to recognize variations on songs from the film played throughout this entire soundtrack, as well as a couple of original compositions. All of them are pleasant and easy to listen to. It's not the kind of thing that's going to necessarily get stuck in your head, but that was also true of the original film. The music in the original film was constantly weird and offbeat, so the music in this game is constantly weird and offbeat. But it works. The sound effects are simplistic, but not all that memorable. Then again, given the 8-bit era, this is kind of to be expected. Everything sounds like it should. No sound effects sound out of place. It's just not the kind of thing that you're going to go, yeah, I remember the sound design of that game. It was great. But if you are familiar with the movie, you'll probably very much appreciate the soundtrack. It's got great variations in 8-bit renditions of various themes from the film. The game does have some replay value as well. There are multiple difficulties that you can play it on. You can collect all the Hands of Fate in each level, and when you beat the game a second time, you get to play as Torgo. Torgo does control differently from Mike, and the dialogue and ending will change slightly to fit the fact that you're playing Torgo. Torgo's control does present a bit of a problem. He's not precise. He's slippery. Given how he walks, both in this game and in the original film, I can understand why he's slippery, and it might have been an intentional design decision. However, that does not make it any less frustrating when you're actually playing as him. You will frequently find yourself flying and falling off the edge because you could not get Torgo to stop on a dime. And this happens enough that it is a problem, and it is frustrating. You can learn to deal with it and beat the game with him, and it's not that difficult to do so because the game as a whole is not that difficult, but it's still a problem, and his controls probably could have been tightened up some with still having the weird walking animation. All in all, this is a good little 8-bit platformer, however. If you're looking for something to waste a day or two, and you just want to see how someone could turn a movie like Monos The Hands of Fate into a video game, you will probably enjoy this. If you're a Mystery Science Theater fan, you'll get more out of this game 
than you will if you're not, however. This game was just specifically designed with them in mind. Thank you everybody for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe down below. It would be greatly appreciated. We'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks everybody and goodbye.